Welcome to part three, where we'll cover for composting, getting started, setting up your system, uh, what tools you might need, some basics on building a pile. So again, let's talk about home composting systems. Um, you need sufficient volume in order to do home composting effectively. The smaller systems are harder to get hot. Do read the reviews of all these systems if you're gonna buy one. There are differences in assembly, for instance. There are differences in recycled materials used. There are distance, some, if you care about supporting local or US made, some are made in the United States, some are made outside the country. But these um, tumblers or in vessel systems, you know, or making your own that's completely enclosed, you know, are great if you're in an urban area with rodent pressure, you know there are rodents, or if you don't have a lot of space. Um, some of these are easy for kids to turn. Some are on the vertical axis, and those are harder to turn, by the way. So you want these turning. If you're going to get a tumbler and um, you have uh, physical issues, you do get one that's on the horizontal axis. And I recommend getting a bin with latches um, if you're getting a tumbler because some there's some bins that the plastic latch kind of slides off. So again, if you're in an area where you know there are rodents or uh, you're in a dense urban setting, do get ones with latches that you can secure. Some of these tumblers come with dual chambers. They're designed to let one compartment finish while you start another com compartment. But when you get to dual chamber tumblers, the compartments become smaller. So it, again, it becomes harder to heat up. And so um, you might consider, if you can afford it, getting a bigger tumbler, which has more space. These stationary systems kind of many sizes. They basically start at 80 gallons and go on up. And so, um, and then, you know, making your own multi-bin system. These are great because you can be adding to bin one. And then as that's filling up, you can start bin two or you can flip bin one to bin two. And then you can store finished compost or browns in a third bin. There are many do-it-yourself designs on the internet check those out. So you may be saying, well, how do I choose? Well, it really depends. How big is your yard, your garden, your farm? Um, if your yard is very big and you have a lot of trees, you may want a bigger system, like a three-bin system and make it. Um, how much you know, trimmings do you have? How much material do you have? You may have an idea of that. How big is your household? Um, or if you're at your community site, your community site. As I mentioned, do you have rats in your neighborhood? You do not want to use an open system like this if you have rats, okay? You want an enclosed system. You can make it yourself. Um, do you want to kill all the weed seeds and make sure you're reaching at least that 140 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, if that's the case, you need to make sure you have enough volume to get hot, which is basically at least three feet by three feet by three feet. So you need an 80-gallon system or... Um, three feet by three feet by three feet in volume. Uh, one thing I encourage you to do is contact your local community, your jurisdiction, your city, your county. Many cities and counties have backyard programs. They have been giveaways or they offer them at reduced price. Um, and some of them require you take a training in order to receive a bin. We did a report some years ago Yes, in my backyard, a home composting guide for local government. So if your government doesn't have a program, you can encourage them to start one. And this might be a good guide to share with them. Um, all right, let's get into what supplies you might need. I mentioned you don't need a temperature probe, but it can be useful. But think, how are you going to collect your uh, kitchen scraps in your in your kitchen? You need some kind of pail. Um you know, how are you moving materials, your carbon, your finished compost? You can do it with just buckets, but maybe you need a wheelbarrow. If you're using a stationary system um, or a, a multi-bin system, you're going to want a compost or manure fork, you, screener or hardware cloth. Um, hardware cloth is metal mesh, quarter inch is what I recommend. You can buy a screener or build your own. You need to maybe shears to cut those yard trimmings. Gloves are a good idea. Um, face mask, I'll talk about um, in a few minutes, but that could be useful during dry conditions. You don't wanna be breathing in those uh, bio aerosols or 
um, airborne particles and you need water. So, you know, um, do you have a garden hose with a spray nozzle? How are you going to get water? So you need access to water. So I'm going to cover now some basic steps to getting started. Um, and I'm going to go through, there's 11 steps I'm going to cover. I'm going to go through these one at a time. The first one is where are you going to locate your bin? So having a site with good drainage, uh, convenient to your kitchen, convenient to your water so source. You need room to move around. Often people put their bin right up against the fence, but having room around it is a good idea. Second, you want to set up your browns. You're going to need that carbon source throughout the year to mix with your food scraps. So that can be an open bin, um, you know, a chicken wire or a geo bin, something like that. Um, you can have another, you know, garbage can. You can just have the bags available, but some way to have access to those browns. Have your tools accessible, your pitchfork, your temperature probe if you're using one. Uh, you're, you're going to decide on your kit, kitchen pail, what you're going to use. Then we're, you're going to build your pile. I'm going to cover that in a little bit. I did include those slides. You're going to build your pile. You're going to aerate and mix. You're going to check and adjust the moisture as it gets hot. After eight weeks minimum, more likely 12 weeks, you can your compost may be ready. And we're going to cover in a different part how you know when your compost is ready and how to use it. Screening is op optional, but if you have a lot of corn cobs or avocado pits, um, those won't break down. You know, screening is great to just get those out and put those back in your pile, and then you're ready to start a new pile. You can uh, empty and move it if it's a movable system. You don't need to, and you can start again. Okay, so preparing your materials, let me just say size matters. You want to chop as needed, aim for two to six inches. Just imagine if you're putting a whole corn cob in your pile, there's less surface area for those microbes to work. But if you're just breaking it in half or breaking in third or chopping it while you have it on your butcher block, then you're creating more surface area for those microbes to do their job. So that can be important. Try to train your household to remove those proto stickers. But you know, you can screen or pick them out at the end, um, but this is at the end of the process. They will be there. Okay, so let's say you have your bucket of kitchen scraps. It's full. This is what it may look like. This is my household over a few days. Uh, garlic, cilantro, banana peels, avocado, um, more banana peels, pistachio nuts. I put them in. They break down. There's a tea bag, um, citrus, coffee grounds. We generate a quarter pound of coffee grounds every day. Um, you come out, this is one of the systems I've had set up. I've had, I have a different system now, but you will need lots of grounds. So collect your leaves and keep them. And this is the storage, uh, one setup. This is a, a, a geo bin with the leaves and I have space around both my systems to move around and it's right there. And okay, so building a pile. Method one is the lasagna method where you basically, um, you want to add twigs or wood chips at the beginning. Think about the airflow through the pile. It's like the chimney effect, or if you're building a campfire, you want to draw cool air in the bottom and, cool, and warm air rises. So what you put at the bottom really does help to promote airflow. So fill your yard trimmings um, at the right uh, uh, moisture level, and you just want to make sure or put a layer of of yard trimmings and you want to make sure that you um uh then you add like lasagna may you add this layer of greens and you want to make sure there's no exposed rotting food on the sides to the best of your ability because exposed food can attract flies which is kind of a nuisance it's not really a problem in the composting process so you always want to add a flat layer of browns um, to cover your food scraps at least two inches thick and then you're going to repeat um, and the pile will really start cooking as you fill your bin and you, and assuming you have a good balance of browns and greens and moisture and oxygen. So that's the lasagna method. Sometimes lasagna method, until you flip your pile or you mix it, it really won't stop cooking. So another method is kind of what you might call is in the nest, where you still put your twigs at the bottom, you fill your bin with yard trimmings at the right moisture. 
um, you make a small hole or nest in the center, you add your food scraps, um, and then you cover the browns. You'd want no food scraps visible. And then um, the next time you come before making the nest again, you kind of get your pitchfork in and you mix it. And you could put, you don't have to do it in the middle. You could do your nest on the side here, on the side here, but, you know, kind of rotate it, but mix it as you go after, you know, the next time you come, give it a, a little mix. You don't have to flip it all the way to the bottom, but just kind of getting those food scraps mixed in. Otherwise, you're going to have this, this center that's kind of got too many greens and could contribute to odors. All right, so tumblers. Um, you're going to add your browns at the right moisture level. You're going to add your greens. Make sure that your browns are at least twice as twice the volume of the greens. You're going to close it. You're going to tumble. And then what you might do is open it and cover with the layer of browns just to, to cover and expose food. And then don't latch it. Don't tumble it again. So that's a tip. I just want to say a word about um, health and safety that... Um, you know, use gloves appropriately, careful with hand to mouth contact, wash your hands, treat your, your cuts and scrapes immediately, protect your wounds. Um, airborne particles, you can inhale them, which is why I recommend wearing a mask. There are fungal spores. There's Aspergillus fumigatus, which not only is in compost and rotting fall leaves, but also in soil. So even if you're a gardener, gardener and you're dealing with your soil and it's dry and you're noticing the soil is becoming airborne, you might want to wear a mask. And now with COVID, we all have masks. And definitely wear a mask if you have asthma, cystic fibrosis, or other respiratory issues. 